Hello everybody and welcome back to a Pixel for Life video tutorial. Today guys we're going to be using Adobe Illustrator and I'm going to be showing you guys what it means to actually do a digital trace. Now you guys need to know that a digital trace is something that a graphic designer can use as a warm up to kind of get started with the idea or for just the day to kind of get warmed up in general. You guys will need to go ahead and import an image that you want to trace digitally. I went ahead and used this free image online. I'm going to go ahead and post a link to, to that image in the description below so make sure to check that out so you guys can trace this exact same thing. Once you guys are in Illustrator you're going to want to go to window and then you want to make sure you click on layers and pathfinder. Now right down here on the bottom is the layers palette as you can see here and this is pathfinder. Now we're not going to need pathfinder for a little while but you guys are going to need the layers panel. Now once you have put your image onto your background make sure to click the little lock icon so you can't drag it around or do anything with it. It'll stay put so you can actually work on your design. Now I've already cut this thing out as you can see here and it is a vector image that you can use in anything. Scale it up, scale it down, do whatever you like. But I'm going to show you guys the process to doing this because it includes several tools including the Pathfinder and it's a great beginner's tutorial if you've never done it before. So the first thing to do guys is go ahead create a brand new layer and you can name these if you like. I don't really worry about it myself when I'm doing a simple thing like this but you guys can go ahead and figure it out from here so what you guys want to do is you want to go ahead and grab your pen tool now on the pen tool we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we select black and then we're also gonna make sure that our stroke is set on to none because we don't want any stroke on this object at all now you guys can use the alt key along with your mouse to scroll in to your image and then you can hold down space bar to drag around as you can see here now you can also hold down alt to zoom out if you guys want to just so you know that's the basic premise okay so this video this image is going to be slightly distorted because it's a rasterized image and that makes for really really bad graphics in Illustrator but that's okay because Illustrator is mostly for vectors so anyways now that you have the pen tool selected guys you're gonna go ahead and click one time now you're gonna see you have this little extension thing that comes off of the pen tool and that's gonna be the next point that you can click on and this is how you can create shapes inside of Illustrator and then always ending back at the point you started is how you actually create that vector image and you'll know it's created because over in the layers panel it'll show you a little preview of it whereas when you are not done creating it uh, let's see here let me go ahead and delete this layer and start another new one and you click you'll see that nothing is actually in that layer okay so as I said we're gonna go ahead and click right here and we're gonna start now this comes to the next point as you can see here guys this is going to be a pretty straight line forward but as you can see when we get to these corners like this it's gonna cut it off and make it be extremely square and that's not what we're looking for so what you guys want to do is instead of clicking billions of times to make this curve simply click and drag from the other point and you'll see it then creates a nice rounded corner on that path for us now this can create another problem okay so if I go over here you can see here that in the middle it doesn't actually curve down to the bottom now I could click and drag this down in but what happens is you guys can see the shape is not actually natural looking so what you want to do is from this point you want to go ahead and click with your alt key and you want to click on that anchor point and you'll see it then resets it to a straight line the reason you want to do that is now you can click with your straight line again as you can see here until you get to the next area that needs a little bit of a curved edge like right here and then you're gonna click on it again to start going further down the sunglasses as you can see here now I will advise you that the less points you have the better because it will actually make it be more natural looking when you are creating your object but you want to use enough points so like right here is a perfect example I've cut into these glasses too much and you can see here when I do this curved edge on this top side right here I end up with too much material so I'm gonna go ahead and do the clicking on the anchor to reset the point again and this time I'm going to then just cut out a smaller area like so and then we can go ahead and continue the curve up as you can see okay so what we're gonna do guys is that's the basics that you need to know once you have completed the entire cutout of the sunglasses all the way around this edge down through here 
all the way up and around, all the way down here, back up into here and back down, all the way over to this point. When you click on your final point, you guys will actually be given a shape like this. And as you can see here, you have the shape that's cut out. Now, the next question, guys, because actually, here's the thing. <laughs> okay, so this is the shape that you guys are going to get. You can see here the whole shape turns red, and that means it is a completed shape from one end to the other. But we have this section in the middle that we need to cut out the actual glasses from. So if you guys see, I've already created the basic cutouts. This one's not super good, but there is reflections on it, so it looks okay. And then, of course, you have your... Um, overall one. And if you put them both on at the same time with the layers, you can see they change to different colors. So guys, what we're going to do is this. It's real simple. We're going to go ahead and take both of these layers here, which are the insets, okay? And we're going to go ahead and copy those, create a new layer, and paste both of them onto one layer. And then we want to go ahead and position those again. Then we're going to go ahead and disable both of these layers here. So I'll just delete them for the t sake of this so you guys know what's going on. Now, this is where our Pathfinder comes into play. So as you can see on layer two and then layer seven, we have an actual order. It's layer two and then layer seven is above it. So what you guys wanna do is you wanna select both objects. And then under the Pathfinder, if you see here, if you hover over it, it says minus the front. Now what that means is the front layer. So if I were to put this layer two in the front, it wouldn't work because it wouldn't cut anything out. It would in fact just make these disappear. But by having them above our entire shape of the sunglasses and then clicking minus front, you'll see then that it cuts out our actual image, which at that point, as I said before, we then get our cutout image, also known as a digital trace. Now you guys can take this, you can tweak it and edit it if you want, it is completely editable. So if you go over here to the anchor point tool, you'll see here I have all of these anchor points and I could literally go in and adjust any one of these that I want at any time to actually change the look of these sunglasses to try to get a more realistic look if I want or I can just click and drag on them and just play around with them, see if I can get anything that's better looking. But that's how you guys do a digital trace. I hope you enjoyed this lesson here on the Pixel for Life YouTube channel. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, guys. And if you're new, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video, and have a good one.